two weeks after the initial release of the Airsoft CRJ, we now have update 1, version 1.0.0.1. What changed or what hasn't? Let's go and find out. Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I was super excited to hear about this. So yes, update 1 is now live for the CRJ. Although that may depend on where you purchased it. If you purchased from the Airsoft store, then you can use the updater that comes with the installation. Just look for it. AS Updater, I think is the name of the app. It should be in your start menu and uh, you should be able to update quickly. Now, if you bought this from Microsoft in sim store, the marketplace, you might have to wait a little bit longer. That has been my experience as well. So uh, hopefully it comes there soon now though. Anyway, let's get inside and get to the updates. You can see immediately the EFB has now a more uh, holistic look. Before it was a bit of a mix between blue and green color scheme. Now we actually are getting more of the bluish theme all throughout very nice very welcome change even the buttons are all blue now except for that but that one is actually very welcome so now when you click on one of these numbers you actually know which you are changing before there was no indication which field was active so very small update but very welcome makes it much easier to plug in stuff right because you know exactly which were you're plugging into awesome Another small thing is uh, when you click on something, it actually reacts now. Because before, when you clicked on something, you're really not sure. Did I click on something? Did I imagine it now? If you click, you see the buttons actually blinking in and out for a while. Very basic user interface, user experience tool, but very welcome. So now you will not doubt yourself anymore. I'm sure I have a couple of times before. Anyway, let's get this plane started and I will go through the other details with you. This next one is very welcome for me personally. If you've ever tried entering one of those departures which had a, a vector uh, leg in the beginning or a course to altitude, you might have encountered this before. But now if you look here, if you go to let's say uh, Orlando runway 18 left Jaguar 6 departure so if you look at the chart it would say 18 left climb on heading as assigned so basically vectors initially and then we're going to Guano and then Mateo right what was happening before there was a bug that Guano instead of being the first waypoint was becoming the last waypoint and that's not only for this departure that's for anywhere with vectors initially assigned so the SIDs, some of the SIDs were literally not working and I had to plug in the waypoints manually. Now though, if you look at this one, if you go to the legs page, you can see now vectors, guano, mateo, exactly as in the chart here. You you would have seen this issue before if you were using Navigraph for uh, Aerosoft CRJ. But if you weren't, then you should be fine. And I'm happy that this works with Navigraph now as well perfectly. Okay. But let me continue plugging in the flight plan because we are actually in Asheville, not in Orlando. So let me plug that in and I will continue on with the changes I noticed. One more thing I noticed. So that indication of which field is active is very nice. And when you enter that, it reflects here. But still, when you set the payload in the simulator, you would need to still click twice. You saw it change, the center of gravity changed when I set the payload in the sim. Not sure why that happens, but just to watch out, still click this as many times as possible. But now at least you know when you're clicking it, right? And until the CG doesn't change anymore. Okay. These speeds are okay. Copy perf init data to FMS. Looking good there. Oh, and I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, something looks different from my view, right? If you look at the co-pilot side, the uh, PFD and MFD on the co-pilot side is turned off. That's actually something I changed in the files in the 
in the directories i think it's in the panel config so that i get some better frame rates because those don't really have a use for me but they're eating up a lot of fps because the glass cockpits in this plane are very heavy and i gained like five to six five to ten fps depending on the situation so i'll try and remember to leave a link in the video description on how that can work for you it's a very simple fix you just need to know where the directory is where the crj is installed and then you'll find the panel config file there and you'll have to comment out some lines right anyway well i'll, I'll leave something in the video description for you guys to reference ah and yes this one is very welcome so you might have encountered this before as you're pushing back even as you're airborne suddenly i don't know why but sometimes these you kind of do these accidental clicks on the tablet even if you're nowhere near them sometimes but the, it's very critical when you accidentally click for example the cold and dark then your plane just literally shuts down but now they added a little bit of check in there that when you let go of the parking brake actually these guys disable All right so when your parking brake is off then you cannot uh, switch to any of the states but if your parking brake is on that can still be a thing so still be careful i would recommend personally whenever you're done with this page leave it leave here immediately don't stay there long before you leave to a different uh, view switch to performance or another tab don't stay here it's deadly guys it's a little bit safer now but still not fully safe okay be warned <laughs> one more change this is very welcome on my end if you're using vatsim if you're using pilot to etc then you're switching frequencies before this only showed two decimal places so when you had those frequencies which uh had three decimal places the 0.25 for example this one 132625 it will not show it only show 13262 but and that's a big thing why because uh, if you actually enter only 13262 for some reason this fms is very picky it will not accept it you have to put the five there yeah i'm not sure if that's by design but that's the first plane i encountered that's picky with that 0 0.005 thing so that one you can now at least put in and you can copy and paste that here although even that logic i'm not sure if it's accurate because from what i know at least in the cj4 in this similar fms the radio tuning page here when you enable something for example let's put that there if you change the com frequency like let's say 119.1 the the previous com one should automatically switch to the recall one but here they're completely independent and i'm not sure if that's the case it's not a big deal though because you have the rtu here which you can use for the actual switching of the frequency and that's one is to one there so i guess it's not that bad at least you still have some way to switch between the standby and the active one just not through the fms there yeah one major watch out though if you're using the if you're using an external application it might actually be applicable even if you're using the built-in atc from the sim so look at the squawk here 2000 right so i'm using pilot to atc as an example so it's it detects the transponder is 2000 here so this is an external application that i use for my atc needs for offline atc highly recommend it but it's paid so 2000 anyway so if I enter 5503, set that as ATC1, it actually doesn't change a transponder code. So for some reason, this one, this setting the ATC1 here, doesn't connect with external apps. So if you're using VATSIM, that might be the problem if you're setting your squawk code that way. If you've encountered some controllers complaining that your squawk isn't set, that might be why. Because even if that synchronizes here with the rtu it says here 5503 the external app isn't now what's strange is if you set your rtu here your atc via the rtu here for example i changed this to 5502 now that one reflects so in short my tip whenever changing the squawk code use the rtu and not the fms okay otherwise 
external apps, maybe even the built-in SIM, the built-in ATC in the SIM will not detect it. One thing I have not been able to manage is uh, going out of standby. So normally you just change this one, right? So you switch from standby to active. But in external apps, I don't think that works. You can see the mode is still off. So I have to manually change that to alt. If you're using that sim, that equates to enabling mode Charlie outside the sim. So in the app itself, in the vPilot app. So just be warned there if you're, if the controller complains or before they even complain, make sure that you enable mode Charlie manually. This one doesn't work. Although to be fair, I don't think I've ever had that work in any external, uh, in any plane. That enabling of the transponder does, just doesn't work in any plane I've tried. No matter if it's default or a custom one, so it might be an interface kind of problem. Oh, and by the way, thank you guys for the tip on this nice app here. I think you call it what Pushback Helper, I think it's the name of this app. This is external actually, so you can move it to your, your external monitor, your other monitor so it's not in view. But it's a very nice way, an alternate to using the default uh, ATC for pushing back because it's very clunky, right? You have to tell ground uh, that you want to push back to the right, push back to the left. Instead of doing that, you can do all of that here. So very handy, very flashy, very simple actually. Very nice. So thank you for that tip. I can't remember who gave it to me, but uh, you mentioned it when I was doing the checklist. So thanks again. Speaking of the checklist, let me plug that in briefly here. There it is, the checklist. So I have a checklist that uh, contains most of the practical steps. And this one, it's, it's because the checklist inside the plane is a bit... It's like you can't use it for a step-by-step -step thing. You do your flows and then you check here, which is very realistic like in real life. But for us simulator guys, we don't really know, we're not really type rated, most of us at least. And for us, a step-by-step -step guide is very helpful. So I made such a thing here from start up, taxi, take off, climb, descent, approach, after landing. So this is available in the mods list, link in the video description. Just look for the uh, CRJ items here so this is how the mods list looks like all my mods all the mods i'm using are here so the crj is here the streamline checklist the link is there right if you want the custom cameras it's there if you want to see all the other mods i'm using i have to try and update this so the pushback helper is that one yeah so all the links are on the right side something like that good anyway just a little bit of plug there Okay, so let's try this thing out. So what I have to do is I can disable the parking brake. It detects it there. So now we can reverse, but turn on our beacon first. Let's reverse and then turn on our fuel pumps. Start the engine number two. AC packs turning off and to rising. If we need to turn to the right, then we just click here, turn right. Very easy, very user friendly. And yes, you can move it to your external monitor if you have an extra monitor, so it's out of view totally. So that works very well as well. <clears throat> now, one of the changes with this update is the, uh, the improvements, are the improvements on the throttle. We'll see if that really works. So far from my initial test, it seems to work. Okay, that looks good. Let me press stop here. And uh, engage the parking brake and remove the tug. All without the help of ATC, which normally how it should be, right? Good. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention as we display the safety features and procedures of the aircraft in case of an emergency. During an emergency, please remain in your seats with your seat belts fastened and your seats in the upright position. In Love case the of a dropping here. cabin pressure, breathing masks will drop from the ceiling and should be placed over your head. If there is smoke in the cabin during the evacuation of the aircraft, the walkway emergency lights will display to the exits which are located here and here. 
is so immersive. There are some more changes, I think, in relation to the option screen getting saved, the flight deck noises, I think they did get saved before. They also improved the throttle, so we'll see that shortly. Let me just synchronize, let me just fix this tab trim here, 6.8. Uh, it's going to be at 6, 7.5, so 6.8 is that way. There we go, we have both engines good. I think I missed a couple of steps here though. Yes, I did. Because I did not go through my usual flow for this video. Because I did not go through the checklist. Robes, maybe you can go off. Okay, looking good there. What else am I missing? Emergency lights are off. Okay. There you go. Okay, that looks good now. So anyway, the throttles, just a little bit of demo. Before, when you pulled back on the throttle fully, so you can see the N1 rising here. If you pulled back on the throttle fully, it actually started rising again. So it was a bit inconsistent. When you're pulling back, it was going up. The N1 was going up. Now it seems a little bit more consistent. Yeah, when you pull back, it really falls down. So that's good. Although when I was flying a while ago, I noticed it's still not 100%. It's a bit better, but it's still fluctuating there. So be forewarned because you'll, you'll need a very, very uh, detailed or uh, yeah, the throttle controls here are very important because this plane doesn't have auto throttle, right? So especially during cruise, you have to find that perfect throttle uh, position to maintain the speed that you want. And with those fluctuations and not synchronized with the throttle position it doesn't help so much so still be warned but more or less it should work starting our taxi here and as we do set my flaps and i'm testing the flight controls so i did notice something in the flight controls so you guys didn't know what your experience is here but i noticed that the the frame rate of the glass panel it's a bit more stuttery so it's not as smooth as before and that's not necessarily a bad thing because that might mean and you guys will help, have to help me confirm this remember that setting in the graphics where you can set the refresh rate of the glass panels the glass cockpit refresh rate i think i have mine set to medium and it seems like that's lower now you can see the flight controls i move my yoke that's a bit stuttery it's not as smooth as before right the frame rate on the glass cockpit is not the best which is good ideally because that should mean that should translate to a better fps so let me know your experience and let's crowdsource this information or is that just me is that just uh, a psychological factor all right lining up here what so take off i don't think there's anything much that changed with the takeoff everything still works properly fine let's go toga mode here we do have the winds right in front of us that should help a bit i did notice yeah the rudder control can be a bit sensitive still I, but i think it's more of a simulator problem I think there's something weird with the rudder control by default. Right, that's pretty weird. So you really have to be very careful with the rudders. It's too sensitive in my opinion. But other than that, I don't think there's anything that's wrong with the plane itself. Positive rate gear up. Let's go to heading mode here. Let me fly this manually for a bit. Flaps can go up. Let's go to speed mode. You can go back to the climb detent. Hand fly this as it's fun to hand fly this plane. And then later on we'll be checking out the 
the approach is I think is where most of the things have changed or improved rather very small changes not very obvious but very welcome because um, you might have encountered every now and then those approaches when you capture the glide slope that the plane actually like dives forward and uh, the hope is that with this update those are gone because I think they've put in a custom glide slope hold logic in there so they're not using anymore the the default autopilot from Microsoft at least when it comes to the approach and following the glide slope so we'll see how well that is uh, behaving at least for this particular example but if you guys have experience if try, you've tried it yourself let's cloud crowdsource this as I say as I like to say and let me know in the comments what your experience is okay it's cleaning up the plane here looking good right there should be able to turn on autopilot right now you can see a plane right there actually on our one o'clock right behind this bar should be coming up soon oh he's gone that's a bit of a shame well you can rewind the video if you don't like landing lights off speed can go up to 290 290 knots good all right but i think everything looks well here yeah so far so good i'll uh, bring you guys back when it's time for the approach and we'll test how well the glide still performs okay catch you in a bit ah yes one very minor thing but some people have been a bit peeved about it the setting the mda or the decision height it's unfortunately still utterly slow so if you are landing at an airport which has a very high elevation you'll be rotating this knob for a very long time thankfully in our case we're going to atlanta decision altitude mda is 1359 let's put it as 1360 there you go that's good enough right there but if for example you're landing at uh, you know colorado springs which was 6,000 altitude the MDA is around 6.8 or 7.2 <laughs> yes that will take a while all right one more thing that I think has been improved is the calculation here so if you go to the MFD menu turn on VNAV mode here you'll see a top of descent 0 minutes 32 nautical miles uh, actually that didn't update because I updated my top of this and I, I set my uh, vertical restriction at Aussie 12,000 based on the chart expect 12,000 it said but it looks like the top of descent is still referencing the old one so that's still broken unfortunately so that needs a bit of um, additional fixing in there now this one I think does work yeah this is working and I'm not sure if you guys have experienced that before um, when the calculations here are utterly wrong that happened to me at some point but that I think has been fixed I think the ultimate root cause for that one I'm just changing the altitude here setting it to 2700 to the final approach fix <laughs> 2700 okay we're at top of descent so let's go VS down to uh, Aussie at 12,000 is the restriction. So it says to reach 12,000, descend at a 2,100 feet per minute rate. Okay, so let's do just that. Pull back on the throttle so that we don't overspeed. And try and maintain 290 knots here. There we go. That sounds good. Balance the throttle landing elevation has been set MDA has been set um, yes the the bug before was when you basically pressed escape and pause the sim like literally pressing escape like like that one and you stay there for a long time for some reason I think the calculations were still running because I think what Hans was mentioning 
from Aerosoft, um, there was no signal that the sim was paused when you pressed escape. So they didn't know that it was paused, the plane didn't know that it was paused. So it was basically still continuing its calculations as if you were moving. I think something along those lines. So I guess the, the ETA, the times were still counting down even if the sim was paused. Somewhere like that. I think that has been fixed now. I've only done a flight, so uh, it's not comprehensive by far. So if you have tested it on your own, as always, let me know in the comments. Crowdsourcing can be a very powerful thing, right? Right, so let's go and test something here. So we're at 290 knots, around 63% N1. That is a bit fluctuating, 66. Okay, 66. Yeah, it's still a bit fluctuating, might be my noisy throttle though. But I'm going to pull back on the throttle here fully. Let's go with this view. Going to pull back on the throttle fully. Let's see if that N1 really goes down. 46 and climbing. 48. Yeah, even if my throttles are fully down. As opposed to moving the throttle a bit above idle. I get much lower N1. I don't really know what is the explanation there. Like you see here, the lowest I can go is around 34. But if I go idle fully, it goes up to 51. So yeah, that bug I think is still there. So I'm not sure which one is the bug. The 51 at N1, because at flight idle, your N1 should still be uh, somewhere around 40%, I would imagine. Or this one right near idle, where you have around 30-something N1. This looks more correct to me, but... I'm not an expert so you guys let me know okay anyway so yeah that bug is still there but at least on the ground when you go to idle it really goes the, th the end one really goes down so that helps a bit so anyway i will continue the descent and i will keep you guys posted i'll bring you back when it's time to capture the glide slope we'll see how that changed one thing that i really like about this plane the TCAS actually works. You can actually see other planes on your MFD right there. 3,400, 2,200. Looks like lots of people in final there. If you look on the right, that's one guy. See him? There he is. So look, have a look where the others are. It's no, not so nice to see. Looks like they are all lined up. Yeah, there, there they are. Three planes in final sequenced perfectly so all right but anyway focusing on our own flight here we have the localizer tuned ladies and gentlemen we are about to land please remain seated until we have stopped 110.5 that is being detected in here so we can actually move to localizer but i wanted to test something because normally like normally you would get some vectors from ATC so they would guide you so they would put you in heading mode and uh, you'll be given vectors to turning final right but uh, I saw an update that said nav to nav let me try and read nav to nav transfer should now switch to nav source vor lock if just one nav is tuned to an ILS so for us, one nav is tuned to an ILS, that's 110.5. And what I understand there is it should actually transfer from FMS1 to localizer 1 automatically, just like how it does in the CJ4, for example. So we'll test that here if that really works. But for now, let's go and set up for landing. Speed check, flaps 20 should be safe. Let's go and lessen our target speed to 170 knots. Flaps 20 indicating. And normally this is where we would get some vectors from ATC but I didn't have it enabled at the moment. My goodness, so many planes. Did you guys see? So many planes there. Welcome to Atlanta guys. You wanted TCAS working? There you are. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so many. Yeah, we have some right in front of us as well. Kind of dangerous. Probably now, not how it should go, but 
you get the drill anyway that looks good so let's go heading mode here manually try and see if we can work the magic on our own maintaining 4000 let me set 2700 which is the final approach altitude the final approach fix that should work right there so many planes actually it looks quite scary there they are all of them I'm using live traffic by the way AI traffic the offline AI traffic I think still crashes but live traffic is working fine on my end as you can see and very nice it really makes the sky so much more alive highly recommend it guys especially when you are visiting these very famous airports and definitely yeah we can work it that way so final approach course is 09 5 let's put this at 065 or a 30 degree intercept does that work i hope so my vectoring for sure is not as good as how a real controller would do it but it should work somewhat so let's enable the approach mode in here and see how that would work out as we get closer we do have localizer captured already there you go lock one is captured glide slope is armed but it has not switched manually or automatically to lock one and we're still in fms mode at least in terms of the visual but we have lock one active already interesting i wonder how it should work okay so let's start descending here to 2700 maybe descend that a thousand feet per minute make sure we don't stall i think i was close there we have planes right in front of us that actually looks very interesting and scary at the same time planes yeah those are real planes delta airlines what's rpa guys you let me know but yeah these this, these are all live traffic and the the mod I'm using for that is UI mod that's also in the mods list Endeavor 479 nurse 7 we are an Endeavor flight as well Endeavor 5022 if I remember correctly oh that is so cool oh my goodness <clears throat> okay let's hide those names and yes with the UI mod you can hide those names so you get a more immersive experience just press the backspace key Okay, looking good so we do have localizer captured uh, we should have okay the glide slope is right there the blue diamond not yet active because um, well we haven't switched yet but I think okay that's interesting all right let's see let's observe how it goes let's observe how it goes so let's go and set our VREF speed here of 132 knots. It's nice to see when you click the button, it actually blinks now. It's so easy to tell. Okay, I've set that properly. Good. All right. Landing gear going down. 2,000 feet above ground and uh, one dot above the glide slope, more or less. That works for me. Landing gear is down and the uh, indicating yes good flaps going to 30 awesome and we'll keep it there yeah it looks like it won't automatically switch to localizer it does capture it fine so it's more of a visual kind of thing i think because even okay let's test it okay i won't switch the nav source so we're still in fms1 We'll see if the glide slope will be captured and we'll see what the behavior will be. Okay, altitude capture because we set 2700 as the final approach fix altitude. Okay, let's see if the glide slope will be captured on its own, even if we don't switch to lock one. There we go. Glide slope has been captured. Let's go and set our flaps to full 45, is it? Yeah, flaps 45 that looks great we are at risk of overspeeding though so let's stop here is that a plane right in front of us yes it is that right there so close we can actually see 
those two engines <laughs> from back here <laughs> scary okay so yeah everything gets uh, armed correctly everything is activating correctly it's just enabling that lock one view that's not automatically taking place which i'm not sure if it really should or maybe it, it really doesn't but it's good that it's working all right so i'm still at auto here autopilot is still on because we are testing how the default logic is working and it looks like it's not very good is it we are way below our glide path our glide slope here yeah yeah looks like there's still a problem Five. looks like we'll have to take over even the flight director is not in line so i think that still needs to be improved if they improve that at all it doesn't dive as abruptly anymore but it still dives more or less so i think that still needs a bit of adjustment in there that's okay i usually if i can if the weather permits i usually disconnect the autopilot around a thousand feet above ground at the latest so it should be okay <clears throat> man it would be nice i should have used pilot to atc here because they would have seen all these planes although they probably would have told me to go around because of all the planes on final We're too high now sink rate 300 it's okay sink rate don't mind me did that plane in front of us just go around i think it did huh oh yeah it went around because there's a plane right there sink rate lining up so let's try and ignore that guy just so we can finish this 100. video is he taking off please don't yeah but it's nice to see that the ai plane actually listens they actually consider that 40 let's land 30, here 20 10 uh, brothers and we are floating yes floating like there's no tomorrow there you go <clears throat> don't worry the runway is pretty long not how you should be doing it if you're doing a proper VATS in flight definitely not and pilot even pilot ATC would have told you to go around there but for the sake of illustration let's land this thing and let's finish the video so yes definitely some improvements Ooh, look at that guy that guy's pretty low there's a runway that way. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop. Okay, but yes. So definitely lots of improvements. I like it. Still some tweaking to be done, but I guess those are going to be part of a major update. I think with the way the versioning is, 1.0.0.1 is more of a hotfix update rather than a full feature one. So we'll see how that progresses, but in the meantime, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your experience is like, and I'll catch you soon. Hopefully we can do a VATSIM flight real soon, now that we know the tricks behind the working with the radios, the squawk, the ATC, and stuff like that. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, clumsy flying, catch you in the next one, bye-bye.